This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, is it audible? Can anyone respond? Okay, fine, 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 right. So, as the, in module pool, we understood how to work with input fields, and uh, what, 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 what? We have seen what table control yesterday. Now let us see, let us see how to validate your transactions. Okay, so if you take our SAP, we have many predefined transactions or we'll be developing what custom transactions also. Okay, so let's understand in how many ways we can validate our what SAP transaction. So this validations can be done in three ways. Okay, we can validate the transaction in three ways automatic field validations flow logic validations and then module pool validations i repeat once again a module pool transaction can be validated in three ways automatic field validation one second please Yeah, automatic field validation, flow logic validation, and then what? Module pool validation. So let me show you an example to understand this uh, what validation. So uh, where do we design the module programs? I'll go to what I see 80. So every transaction we design, okay, has to be validated, has to be validated before we submit the data, before we read the data, okay. So let's see how to validate. So I'll go to SC18. Okay, let me choose what program. I'll give the program name as. I'll give the program name as Z. Z something test MPP4. Some name I'll give. Z test MPP4 done. Press enter. It is saying the program does not exist. Do you want to create the object? Yes. Okay, I'll create the program with top include file. Done. Continue. I'll give the name of the top include file as Z what test MPP4 top continue. Done. Type of program is what module pool. I'll save it in the local object. Done. Then let me design a screen. I'll right click on the program, create what oh, sorry. Sorry, not the include. I have to right click on the program. Right click on the program. Create what a screen. So let me create a screen. I'll give the screen number as something 100. In the it will open the screen painter. In the attribute stuff, screen type is normal only. Let me give a description here. I'll say screen 100. Done. Screen 100. Then I'll design the layout. Right, so on this layout, just try to understand, on this layout, I'll design some fields from the k one table. So how do we design the database fields? I'll just go to secondary window. Okay, go to what? Secondary window, right? I'll choose what? Dictionary slash program fields. I'll give the table name as what? k one I'll take some fields from the KNM table. Let me take customer number. Okay, I'll take the customer number. What should I take? Customer number I'll take. I'll take land one. I'll take land one. Let me take some date field. Do you have any date field anywhere? Yeah, there's a field called as ERDAT. What is this? Created on. It's a date field, DATS of 10. Okay, so I took what three fields. Okay, they are my three fields. Done. What is the name of this uh, field? K one I feel Kunar, K one I feel Land one, K one I feel Yar, DAT. Done. Now what I will do is just let me give a box kind of thing. So here you can see on the left hand side on the toolbox we have the box. I'll just draw it.
done. So I just drawn a box here. I'll give the name of this box as something BX1. Text I'll give it as something automatic field validation. So we're trying to understand the meaning of what automatic field validation. But this is only for a better look and feel. I've drawn the box, but not compulsory. Let me go back to the layout. Yeah, right. So this is my done. So now I'll take one button also. Okay, for already we know for every transaction should have one back button or I should take a separate button like exit. So I'll just double click on this. I'll give the name as B1. Type text I'll give it as what? Exit. Function code let me give it as what? FC1. FC1. Done. FC1 is the function code. Let me provide the logic for the exit button. We know that whenever we click on the module pool button, what is the event triggered? PAI, process after input. So in my flow logic screen, I'll handle what PA event, process after input, and I'll come in the PA model. PA model does not exist, create the object. I'll create that in the top input program. Done. Do you want to save it? Yes. Done. So here I'll say case I you form. Case I you form. I'll say when what FC1. When FC1, I'll say what leave what program when FC1 leave program. I'll give this as what end case. Done. Let me save it. Check for syntax error. Activate this. Right. So activate the include program. Activate your uh, what flow logic. Then create the T code for this. Right click on the program. I'll say create what. Right click on the program and say create transaction. Let me give the T code name as something what ZT4 something. Okay, ZTM4 is the T code I am getting. Done. Provide the text T code for MP4. Pro program and Dyn Pro you have to select. Already we know this. Continue. So, what is the program name? Z test MPP4. I'll give the screen number which is 100 in this case. Select the checkbox SAP J4 Windows. Done. Let me save it. T code is saved. Activate your program before execution. Right click on the program, activate. Done. Execute the program. I can run the T code or I can say right click on the program, execute what? Direct processing. Done. So I got the screen. Okay, I'll click on the exit button. Right. And if you want to enable the back button, already we know. Already we have seen one example. In the PBO event, you have to say set PF status. As part of the GUI status, you have to assign the function code for the back button and implement what event? PA event. Then we already know that. So now let me exit. Working fine. Now my first requirement is I want to make this customer number field as mandatory. Compulsory, the user has to enter the value. Okay. Without entering the value, if I click on exit, it should not allow me. So how to make it as a mandatory field? I believe we have covered it yesterday. So I'll just go to the screen layout. If you want to make any screen field as mandatory, you go to the selection screen field, we use obligatory. Here I'll double click on this, double click on that field. In the program tab, you have to choose what? Input, you have to make it as what? Required. Input, you have to make it as what? Required. Input, if you make it as required, it becomes what? Mandatory. So now what I'll do, let me test this T code. Activate your program once. Right, execute this. Exit direct processing. Done. So you can see I got a tick mark here, which indicates that it is a mandatory field. So when I click on this, and I click on this, I'm unable to exit. Compulsory, I have to provide the value. If I don't provide the value, if I try to exit, I got the validation message. You know? This message is provided by you by SAP itself. This is the standard message provided by SAP itself. And what basis it is validating this field? This is the property as set at what level? Screen level. This is the property as set at what? Screen level. Okay. So it is validating. Done. Now enter some value. Done. Now here it is asking what country. No? It is asking country. Okay. 
now i'll browse this country keys are starting from what ad ad aef i don't have any country key with ac so i'll try to give invalid country key which is not defined in my sap system okay i'm giving a invalid country key when i try to exit good i got an error entry ac does not exist in what t005 so this also comes under what automatic field validation on what basis it is validating it is checking for the value it is checking for the value in the database level okay so this is maintained at what database level since it is an invalid value it is not allowing me to it is not allowing me to exit the transaction done so i need to enter what compulsory invalid value okay now i can exit done so we have seen two examples for automatic field validations what are they one field is validated based on the property set at screen level now for how to how to make this field as mandatory at the screen property level only we have made the program input is what required then for this one i have not mentioned anything but what is happening this field has got a data element and this data element may have a search help or this data element may have a domain that domain might have a value table so i'm trying to provide a value which is not defined in what sap system so invalid value so i am unable to perform what exit done here also the validation message is given by sap this is one example another example is suppose a date we have let me choose the date I'll browse this i'll choose some date what is the date here 9 by 6 by 26 by 2 18 i'll give the month as 19 Month cannot be 19. The month can be between 1 to 12 only. So I'm trying to give invalid entry, invalid date. When I try to exit, good. I got an error, invalid date. Again, this is a validation message. Fired by what? Triggered by what? Provided by what? SAP itself. Okay. All these things comes under what? Automatic field validation. So how do we understand the automatic field validations? It is automatic field validation means these validations are triggered. based on the properties of the field set at what screen level or properties of the field maintained at what database level if these validations are not validated properly we cannot exit the transaction so hope it's clear these are the examples for automatic field validations what are they mandatory fields invalid values invalid date all this comes under what automatic field validations so sometimes what the customer prefers is sometimes what the customer prefers is okay here it's a mandatory field i will not enter a mandatory field or i'll enter invalid value then also i should do forceful exit okay so if you take any online uh, forms you will have what submit button and cancel button means forcefully if you want to come out of that screen every screen will have what cancel button kind of thing okay so this is graceful exit we have then what forceful exit okay so what i want even if the automatic field validations are failed fail i should able to forcefully exit the transaction in this case i am unable to do it until unless everything is validated properly then only i can what exit okay so that's why what you will do is in every module pool requirement you will take one additional button which will whose functionality is similar to what cancel whose functionality is similar to what cancel so what i'll do now i'll take a button additional button i'll give the button name as b2 i'll give the text as something what cancel anything you can do but i'm giving a meaningful text as what cancel function code i'll give it as what fc2 function code is what fc2 so so far for the buttons what are the properties we are setting name text and what function code name text and function code now for a button which should act as a cancel button you need to set one additional property called as function type you need to set an additional property called as function type we have fct type so let me choose this fct type i'll choose what exit command function type i'm choosing what exit command so i'll choose exit command done okay this is additional property we have to set for buttons which should act as what cancel button what is that function type what exit command not only this 
apart from setting the function type to exit command, we need to define a corresponding at exit command module in the PA event because whenever you click on the button, what is the event triggered? PA. So in the PA event, I need to define at exit command module. So far, how you are defining the modules? Module followed by module name. Now we have to say module, some module name, some module name. You have to use the addition what? At exit command. Module, module name, at exit command. As part of this module definition, you provide the logic for that additional button like cancel. Okay, so I'll choose top include program, continue. Yeah, here I'll say, KSI you come, what, when what, when what, FC2, yeah, when FC2, same logic, leave program, but this logic should be implemented as part of what at exit command module. This at exit command module will be executed only when we click on the buttons whose function type is set to what E. Understood? This at exit command module will be executed only when the user clicks on the buttons whose function type is set to what E. So now I click on the program and I'll say activate. click on the program let's activate let me execute this that so this is a mandatory field right i cannot exit now i'll click on cancel what is the additional thing we are set for this for this button we are set function type to e and we are defined on at exit command module so that exit command module will be executed now so when i click on this Yes, I'm able to exit forcefully. Listen, so almost in every module pool transaction, we will be taking an additional button which will act as a cancel. For that button, we have to set additional property function type to E, and then you have to define that exit command module. Not only this mandatory fields, suppose here I'll give what? Invalid country key like AC I'll give. Earlier, I'm unable to exit, right? Now I'll click on cancel. I'm able to exit. So this is a concept of what at exit command module and about uh, what automatic field validation. So automatic field validation means these validations are triggered. These validations are triggered based on what? These validations are triggered based on what? The properties maintained for the field, the properties maintained for the field at the screen level are the properties maintained for the field at what? Database level. If automatic field validations are failed, the user cannot exit the transaction. In this case, we need to consider an additional button which will act as what? Cancel button. For that button, you have to set an additional property function type to E and define that exit command module. Now, any questions, please ask me. Any questions, anyone? Right, so this is one way of what? Validating. Now let me go to same screen. Let me show you flow logic validation. So what I'll do, I'll take the fields from other table now, go to secondary window, go to secondary window, dictionary slash program fields. Yeah, is my voice is audible to everyone? Hello. Hello, is my voice is audible to everyone? Sayed. Sayed, I think problem is from your end only. Okay, so let me design the fields. So I'll say dictionary slash program fields. I'll take the fields from a table called as Mara table, material master data. We have a standard table called as Mara, material master data. I'll choose Mara, I'll click on get from dictionary. I'll take some fields here. Let me take material number, MATNR. 
I'll take material type. I'll take material group. Material group. So I took some three fields. I'll place it here. These are my three fields. Done. What are those fields? This is Mara hyphen MATNR. This is Mara hyphen MTRT material type. This is Mara hyphen MT MATKL material group. Okay, so for just for better visibility, I'll take a box. I'll draw it here. I'll give the name of the box as BX2. I'll give the text as something what? Flow logic validations. Flow logic validations done. Okay. Now, what is my requirement is. <clears throat> Let me save it. Check for the syntax error. Activate this. Right. So automatic field additions are triggered based on the properties of the field maintained at what screen level or the properties of the field maintained at what database level. Let us understand the flow logic validation. So it's very simple. So first see the current uh, execution. Direct crossing that. So this is a mandatory field compulsory to put a value. Now my requirement is here I have to give the material type. What are the possible material types I can give? If you browse this, I think it is going F or L. These are the possible material types. So my requirement is it should allow me to enter only coupons, finish the product, coupons, finish the product. And what uh, perishables, coupons, finished products, and what perishables. If I choose other than these three values, if I choose other than these three values, as of now you can see when I click on exit, working fine. Okay, so if I enter other than those three values, it should not allow me to what? It should not allow me to what? Perform other operation. So only three possible values. What are they? Coupons, finished product, and uh, perishables. Okay, as of now, I can give any value from this list. Okay, I'm able to what? When I press enter, also nothing is happening. I'm able to what? Exit the transaction. So, what is the field name where I have to restrict the values? This is the field name. What is that? Mara hyphen MTRT is a field name. So, what I'll do here? Here, in the flow logic section, in the flow logic section, we need to define that. So, what I'll do here, I'll say at the beginning of the PI event, PA event as a field. What is the field name? Mara hyphen MTART. Field Mara hyphen MTART values. Okay, field Mara hyphen MTART values. What are the possible values you want to accept? One is coupons. Next, what? Finished product. FERT. Next is what? Perishables. FRIP. Only these three values it should allow. If I enter other than these three values, it should not accept. So let me save it. Check for the syntax error, no errors, activate this. So why it is called as flow logic validation? Because I am validating from what flow logic. The possible values I am giving in what? Defining in what? Flow logic. Hope it's clear. Field, field name, values, followed by a set of values. Let me execute this. First, activate. Execute. Done. I'll enter this is a mandatory field. I have to enter the value. Done. Now here, here I'll enter other than those three values. Okay. I'll enter finish the product. As often this is a valid value. When I press enter, nothing is happening. I'm able to exit also because it is very much accepted value. Now I'll say execute what direct processing. I'll give them customer number. Done. Now we are for the material type. I'll enter the invalid value. I'll enter trading goods, which is not defined in the flow logic set of values. Okay, so I'll click on exit button and I'll press enter. This is an invalid value now. It should hold only those three values. So when I press enter or when I do some other action, okay, when I press enter, good. What happened here? Enter a valid value. Enter a valid value again. This validation message is given by whom? By SAP itself. In case of automatic field validation, also 
the validation messages are provided by SAP itself. Here also, it is provided by SAP, and you can see here, this field is, this field has failed. This field has failed the flow logic validation. When it has failed the flow logic validation, the other fields, the other input fields on the screens got disabled. No? The other input fields on the screen got disabled, not allowing the user to enter the values. Okay. Suppose here, instead of this AVA, I'll choose something coupons, which is a valid value. When I press enter, again, they're automatically enabled. So what is the understanding? If a transaction field fails flow logic validation, the other fields on the screen will be disabled, not allowing the user to input the values. So how to avoid this, we'll see. So what I have to do is here, very simple. Okay, so my requirement is, even if this field is failing the validation, this material number should not be made disabled. It should be an enabled state only. Okay, or this created or this customer number should be what? Enabled state. What is the name of this field? K9 iPhone Kunar. What is the name of this field? Mara iPhone what? MATNR. So these two fields should be still in what? Enabled state. So I need to group them. How do we group them? Here in the PA event only. I will use a statement called as chain. Chain. Here I'll say field. What is the field you want? Don't want to disable? K9 iPhone Kunar. K9 iPhone Kunar. What is the other field? Field Mara iPhone what? MATNR. Okay, so between chain and chain, I've enclosed this field. So what happens here? Yeah, what happens here? What are the fields I enclosed between chain and chain? Will always be not enabled state. Even if this field, even if this fields fails, what flow logic validation? So let me activate this. Understood. So here we need to group the logically related fields. Okay. So right click on this. Activate once. When I execute, right? This is your mandatory, right? I'll enter some invalid value. Earlier entered AVA, which is invalid. So when I press enter earlier, all the fields got disabled. Now when I press enter, good. You can see now, customer number is in enabled state. Material number is enabled state. And obviously, material type is also in what? Enabled state. Okay. And the validation message gain word SAP itself. Hope it's clear. Hope it's clear. When I exit here, yes, I'm unable to exit. So same is the case with the flow logic validation. If a field fails the flow logic validation, the user cannot exit the transaction but i can cancel it i can do forceful exit. that's all this is a concept of flow logic validation how do we understand in case of flow logic validations the validation value the validation is defined in what flow logic level and the validation values are maintained in the flow logic screen okay if any screen field fails of flow logic validation the other fields on the screen gets disabled not allowing the user to input the Values. In these cases, you can group the logic related fields by using what chain and end chain so that what are the fields I enclosed within chain and chain will always be an enabled state even if any field fails a flow logic validation. That's all. This is about the flow logic validations. Any questions? Sir, instead of uh, giving the SAP message, can we have our own messages? Yeah, next scenario. Module pool validation. In case of automatic and in case of flow logic validations, the validation messages are always provided by SAP itself. If you want user-defined messages, if you want user-defined validation messages, we have to go for module pool validations. Next scenario. Okay. Now, I'll take in the same layout, I'll take the fields from some other table. Let me take it from 
uh, sales document at a table, VBA table. I'll take some fields, webland, I'll take date, time, and person. I'll take these four fields. Done. Or do we have any structure with the ZC VBA key? This is another server. No, it's not there. This structure is not available. So I'll go for normal VBA key only. I'll go for VBA key only. Done. I'll take some fields. Webland, date, time, and ER, NA. I'll take these four fields. Let me put it here. Okay. Then I'll take a box for clear identification. I'll give the name of the box as BX3. Text and give it as something what? Module pool validations. Module pool validations done. Okay, so what is the name of this field here? If you double click on this, the name of this field is VBAK for Webland. The name of this field is VBAK for ERDAT, VBAK for ERZDT, VBAK for ERNAM. Done. Done, 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 done. Okay, so now my requirement is. I'll enter the data in what? VBLN field. I'll enter the data in VBLN field. When I press enter, when I press enter, I should get the corresponding data and display it in the rest of the field. So whenever we press enter key in the input field, already we know what is the event triggered? PAI. So in the PA event only, in the PA event only, somewhere here, anywhere. Wherever you want, you can write it. So I'll say somewhere here. And it's a field. What is the field name? VBA and Weblen module get data. Field field name. Field field name. Module module name. Okay. Field field name. Module module name. So I'll double click on this module. Does not exist. Create the object. Yes. I'll create what? I'll create that in the top include program. Continue. I'll save it. Done. So what I'll do here is based on the web blend, I have to get the value. So I'll say if, what is the name of the field VBA case from web blend is what? Not initial, if it is not blank, okay, if it is not blank, I'll get the data, I'll get the data. Okay, so here I'll say, but if it is not initial, get the data. Else, I'll just give my own message. What is that? Please enter. Please enter sales document type. I'll give it as what information message. Type is what information message. If VBA KF and webland is not initial, I'll get the data. Select what is that ERDAT, ERZDT, ERNAM from a VBA K table into what are my screen fields name? VBA KF and ERDAT, VBA KF and ER ZDT VBA hyphen ER NAM okay where Weblen is equal to what? What is the screen field name? VBA hyphen Weblen done. I'll say if size of us is equal to zero, I'll just give a message. I'll give a message sales document found. This is my user defined message type what I else. I'll give the message. Or I'll give it a status bar. Okay. Type yes. Here also I'll give what on the status bar I'll give it. Type yes. Status bar. As indicator status bar. Message. I'll say sales document not found. Type or as status message. End it. That's all. Let me save it. Check for the syntax error. I got an error. VBA K webland VBA K ERDAT VBA K ERZT is unknown. They are unknown. Okay. So unknown is what? Already we know if you are using the screen fields in your program, we should declare the screen field. So how to declare now data VBA K and webland type VBA K and webland VBA K and ERDAT type VBA K and ERDAT like that you have to do. Okay. But only we know the variable names cannot contain what hyphen. Okay, it will give warning, it will not capture the value. So what I have to do now, I'll say tables what? VBA. But tables VBA will unnecessarily create a work here with what? All the fields. 
we are referring only to four fields, but unless we create a work area. So one solution is, instead of using this one, I can create my own dictionary structure with four fields, as we have seen. Okay, dictionary structure with the own fields and do it. Otherwise, and then I can say tables, uh, so and so dictionary structure. That is okay. Otherwise, what you can do, you can change these field names manually. Suppose here, what is the field name here? VBA KFN WebLab. So we have to make a change such a way that we should not have iPhone. So I'll give you this as something V underscore WebLab underscore I can give. And this, I'll double click on this. I'll give this as V underscore ER DAT. Understood. Then I'll double click on this. I'll do it as V underscore ER ZDT. V underscore ER ZDT. Then I'll double click on this again. I'll say V underscore ER NAM. Done. So these are the four fields I declared. Done. Let me save it. Check for the syntax error. Yeah. In the program, I'm referring to VBAK webland. So what I'll do here also I have to change it now. So what is this? Field V underscore what? Webland. V underscore webland module module name. Okay, inside this module definition here also it's not VBAK now, it's V underscore VBL in the not initial. Get the data into the target fields. What is the target fields? V underscore ERDAT. And this also is what V underscore ERZDT. This also is what V underscore ERNAM. Done. Where Weblen equal to what? V underscore VBL. That's all. So I am using the screen fields. Again, I should declare the screen fields. It will say what? V underscore Weblen, V underscore date is what? Unknown. Already we know. If you are using the screen fields in the program, you have to declare them. So let me declare now. Here I will say data. V underscore Weblen type what VBA hyphen Weblen then here I'll say V underscore ERDAT type VBA hyphen ERDAT then I'll say V underscore ERZDT type VBA hyphen ERZDT then I'll say V underscore ERNAM type VBA hyphen ERNAM done so i declare the screen fields with the same name check it no errors or oh, no open state that's why what is the error If the blood is not initial, Underscore weblen is not initial. Is this correct or no? Yeah, anyone uh, any suggestion? Oh, sorry. Sorry, was no one has told me. We are comparing with weblen, so I have to use what select single. Let me save it. Check for the syntax and activate this. We are getting only single record, you are comparing with primary key field now, so select single. Then activate this. Go back and activate your flow logic. Flow logic is activated now. When I execute, activate the program also. I click on the program, execute direct processing. 
done. So this is a mandatory field, an interest and value done. And here, sales document, I'll enter something 4980, right? Or I'll enter, I'll not enter anything. I'll not enter anything. I'll press enter. What is the event to get? PAI. Then I got a message here. Yes. Please enter what? Sales document. Done. I'll enter a value something A4980. I'll press enter. What happened here? Sales document not found. Okay. I'll enter 4980. I'll press enter. Yes, I got the data. I got the message sales document found. Understood. So if you want to perform field specific validation and if you want to maintain your own validation messages, we'll go for what? Flow, module pool validations. What is the syntax for that? In the PA event, you have to say field, field name, module, module name. As part of that module implementation, you can write the logic according to your requirements. That's all. This is your module pool validations. So a transaction can be validated in what? Three ways. Automatic field validations, flow logic validations, and module pool validations. In both automatic field validations and flow logic validations, the validation messages are provided by SAP itself. In case of module pool validations, the developer needs to provide the validation messages. Okay, and uh, automatic field validations are triggered based on the properties of the field maintained at screen level or the properties of the field maintained at database level. In case of flow logic validations, those validations are defined in the flow logic screen. In case of module uh, pool validations, the field specific to perform field specific validation will define the module for the field in the flow logic and define that module and define that particular model. As part of that model definition, we can flash what user defined messages. And we understood the purpose of chain and chain. If a screen fails of flow logic validation, the other fields on the screen will be disabled, not allowing the user to input the values. In order to keep the logic related fields in enabled state always, you have to enclose that fields between what chain and what and chain in the flow logic section. And if any screen field fails the validations, the user cannot exit the transaction until the field is validated. In this case, we can do the forceful exit by considering a button which will act as a cancel button. For that button, we need to define an additional property called as function type to E and then define the corresponding at exit command module. As part of that at exit command module, right? as part of that at exit command module, we need to define what? The logic to exit the transaction. This at exit command model will be executed only when we click on the buttons, only when we click on the buttons whose function type is set to what? E. E indicates what? Exit command. That's all. There are three ways we can validate the any module pool transaction. Any questions, please ask me. No questions. So I'll wind up for today. Tomorrow we'll see other concept in module pool. Like uh, yesterday we have seen table control. Tomorrow we'll see another type of control like tab strip control. How to work with tab strip control. How to work with subscreens. Okay. So I'll wind up. We'll continue tomorrow. Sir, one question. Yeah, I will. Sir, uh, when you are starting uh, at that one, huh? Already started, na? Three days back, four days back. Already started, is it? Hmm. But we, we haven't got any mail. Uh, sorry, I have not got any email. No, yeah, our people will send mail to everyone, Rajendra. It's morning six o'clock before this class. Okay, okay. I think I missed that email. Sir. If you, want to, if you want to attend, you drop a mail to me and cc to the office mail ID so that okay. uh, our people will add it in the list. We attend a okay. couple of sessions. Okay. 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 Ok
Okay. Okay. Up in the side of that. And what are the sessions you missed? I will we'll share the recorded sessions. Fine, fine. All right. All right. I'll do that. Shikant, what is the doubt uh, regarding what? The mail. Ah, no, no. The mail is uh, I need to cover that pending topics to other people also, like currency and quantity, buffering concept, and uh, authorization update. Okay. So instead of taking separately for them, what I thought is for them, I'm discussing other concepts first. So it will take some time for them. So meanwhile, I'll complete BDC and module pool for you. After completing BDC and module pool, I'll come back to dictionary objects and discuss the rest of the topics in dictionary objects. That's what I mean to say. Okay, so don't worry, I'll cover. But first, let me complete MP module pool and what? BDC. Then after that, I'll cover the pending dictionary objects and other uh, topics. So, I'm going to send a test mail. Okay, attend tomorrow or uh, I'll ask you to share that videos also. What are you yes. today? Just go through that if you have time. Attend from okay. tomorrow at 6 o'clock in the morning. Sure. Okay, then videos on that you can discuss. Okay. Okay, sir. Fine. Okay. So I'll wind off. We'll continue tomorrow. <laughs>